Hey there! In this video, we'll be talking about some features in Studio One that can be very helpful during recording. First, let's talk about the loopback function in our Windows drivers. The loopback function lets you record audio from a browser or any other media source in Windows. Let's begin by turning on the loopback function in Universal Control. In Universal Control, simply go to the loopback function and set it to virtual. Now let's go back to Studio One and open up the I.O. settings. Here, we're going to set up input sources taking from the virtual ins. Click on Add Stereo and let's rename this to Virtual. Now click on Apply and then OK and now we can set up our recording channels. Simply right-click in this area and add Stereo Audio Track. Now set the inputs to Virtual. Let's record ARM the track. And let's record a guitar backing track from a browser. As you can see, audio is now coming into our audio track. We can now go ahead and press record to start recording. Now that we have our guitar backing track, let's record an electric guitar. This time, let's add a mono audio track and make sure to choose the proper input source. For our guitar effects, let's use Ampire. Ampire is Studio One's guitar and bass amp, cab, and pedal effects modeling plugin. Ampire is available in all versions of Studio One but is limited to the basic version when using Prime or Artist. It's very important to have low latency monitoring when recording electric guitar with the modeling plugin. And that's what we are going to look at next. Let's go into the audio settings by clicking on the I.O. icon in the mixer window. Click on Options, Audio Device, and here you can see the device block size. The lower the block size, the lower the latency. Your block size settings will depend greatly on your computer's specifications. So try and experiment with the lowest possible setting without having any cracks or pops in the audio. Now let's go to processing to set up our dropout protection. Dropout protection basically gives us a secondary block size setting that we can use while mixing especially when utilizing a lot of plugins and virtual instruments. Again, the block size setting will depend greatly on your computer's specifications. Down here, you can see the predicted audio latency for your system. Use the low latency mode for recording and the standard latency when mixing. Now let's arm our track for recording and make sure to turn on the software monitor. Turn on low latency mode by clicking on the Z icon in the master fader. Next, let's talk about the metronome settings. Down here, you can see the metronome and other time signature related settings. You can change the tempo by simply typing it in or tapping with the mouse click in this area. You can go ahead and change the time signature by simply clicking and changing the values. You can turn the metronome on and off using this icon. And the wrench icon brings up the metronome settings. Here, you can change the volume of the different beat elements, the accent, beat, and offbeat. And you can also change the metronome sounds. On the mains fader, you'll find the volume slider and a button to turn the metronome on and off on the mains bus. And there you go, a couple more features in Studio One that can help you with your recording process. If you're looking for more tips and tricks videos, make sure to check out the PreSonus YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.